Okay, I'm, I'm Jim Kirtley. I'm a, a member of the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, um, and I'm also part of the Research Laboratory for Electronics. My uh, principal interests are in electric power systems and uh, rotating electric machinery. I got involved with electric power systems because my, um, my work in electric machinery um, was in very large machines, the kind of machines that are used for uh, generating power in large power plants. And of course they connect directly to the power system. So I have now become quite interested in electric power systems. And oddly enough at the other end of the electric power system, my principal interests are in distribution systems at the customer end of, of the whole network. Something like half of all electric power is used to drive motors. Maybe it's only 40 percent, but it's a very substantial fraction of all of the electric power uh, that is generated is used to drive motors. And with the increases in efficiency of lighting systems, I think that number will only grow. Um, electric machinery is being used more widely, I, I mean motors, are being used more widely in things like ships and airplanes and of course trains and cars. Virtually all transportation systems are making more use of electric motors. I have been involved uh, here at MIT in uh, developing motors for mobile robots and that's going to be a, a growing application for electric motors because um, they're more efficient than the hydraulic systems that uh, most people have been using uh, for robots. Uh, we have developed uh, motors that, that are, um, are properly adapted for use in robots. Uh, for example, you may be familiar with the, uh, the Cheetah Project, uh, Sang Bae Kim's uh, little four-legged robot uh, that, that is being developed in the mechanical engineering department. Um, a colleague of mine, Jeff Lang, has been working uh, closely with Sang Bae, and um, I've helped out. We've discovered that if you take into account the peculiarities, or I shouldn't say peculiarities, but more the specific application, um, you can build a motor that is uh, far better adapted to use in the robot than the kind of general purpose motor you might buy um, if you went down the street to the motor store. Um, because the, the um, range of, of forces that are required to be generated by that motor is very large, um, we can build a motor that um, can produce the torques that are required magnetically even if it can't necessarily produce the forces, re the forces for long periods of time. It can produce the short spikes of force that are required. So we've, we've made uh, a motor that is um, very well adapted to, to that process uh, and perhaps a little too powerful for, uh, for that particular robot. Uh, we understand it can it can jump real high in the air and probably would not survive landing if they didn't catch it. <laughs>